I'm excited to have you join a discovery, a discovery in law. Who owns nature? Galileo. Can I see some hands? Who of you know Galileo? Galileo, yeah, right. The guy that for the first time in history proved that not Earth was the center of the universe but that Earth was just one of the planets circling around the Sun. And the Sun was part of one of the solar system. And the beautiful thing about Galileo is what he said, a paradigm shift in science. He created a new way of looking at science and he challenges us every day and he still does. He says, go and discover the truth. And this is what we will do today. Discover the truth on who owns nature. I am nature. I've had my most amazing moments of wholeness, of feeling one, of connectedness in nature. As a child, I would climb the highest trees near to my house, 20, 30 meters high. With my slippery boots, I would climb all the way up there until all these people down there were small Lego figures. And at the same time, when I was at the top of the branches, some would already snap because they were so thin and tiny, the wind would pick up and would take me back and forth. And I would be scared, scared to fall down and for my father to break every bone in my body that was still not broken for falling out of the tree. But I was also in awe. And I was one, I was overlooking the other trees. And I was one with nature. And we all have such amazing moments in nature. All of us do. For instance, this beautiful sunset. For instance, light sifting through a cave when you walk through it. A waterfall, a flock of birds. Walking on a beach, seeing a thunderstorm approach, having nowhere to hide. It excites you. You feel one. One with nature. And we are nature as a fact. We are nature. And I could do a test. I'm advising you not to do the last one here right now. But we are critically connected to nature. Try not eating for a month. Try not drinking water for a week. Try not breathing for three minutes. Don't do it now. But you're dead. Critically connected to nature. Something that I discovered recently, an awesome fact as well, some of you will say, ew, but every one of us in this room carries about one and a half kilos of non-human life on him or her. Microorganisms, millions of them in our intestines, they help us digest. Without them, we would be dead. They would be dead without us. We are critically connected to nature. We are nature. But we live on a planet as humanity, as a parasite. We are eating up our planet. And even if you deny things or cannot comprehend such a thing like climate change, if you look at everything that's happening, burning down, slashing down rainforest, plastic soup and pollution, polluting of our rivers, depletion of our groundwater resources, making bees almost go extinct, etc., etc., etc. And it's all adding up together. And it's creating, through which we are doing this, because the average, average European and America use, like us here in this room today, we use up to four to eight planets Earths, the way we live, the way we consume. How? Well, the t-shirt that you have on is produced in Uzbekistan. It uses water, soil, manure there. It's transported to China there. It's dyed. It pollutes the river there. Then it's going to Bangladesh where it's sewed together. And then you get it in Primark or wherever you buy it. I hope you buy it organic and somewhere else. But our whole system is organized in a way that we are ruining our planet and we don't even see it. We don't even notice it. In fact, we are eating up our planet. And the day that we eat it up, 
progresses every year, comes closer every year. We are creating a negative future for our children and future generations. Today we are creating a world in which they have less opportunities than we have. As a concerned father and Dutch ombudsperson for future generation, I have to stand on that. That is wrong. It's morally wrong and it's legally wrong. We cannot do this. We have to take into consideration the well-being of future generations, a lesson we can learn from indigenous societies. But the question was, who owns Earth? And this is where all misery starts. Because for indigenous peoples, it's not a matter of ownership of the planet, but today I will address it through ownership because this is the way that our world works. Humans, especially men, have claimed every piece of land on this planet, apart from a tiny bit in the Antarctic region. It's even worse. We've claimed pieces on the moon. You can buy pieces of land on the moon online. It's crazy if you look at it. If you look at it in time, what we've done and how long we've been around and our impact on the system, who are we to claim rights on something like the moon? To put this in perspective, this tree is a tree that stands in a group at Bristlecone Cove in California. I visited it a few years ago. This group of trees is amazing. They're about five, six meters high, not that big. But they're 5,000 years old. It's just amazing to look at them and how they are grown. They grow so slow. They impress you just by standing there. These trees were around when the pyramids in Egypt were not even built. This tree was 3,000 years old when Jesus walked the earth. This tree will be around for another few thousands of years unless we ruin its environment or cut it down or burn it. With awe, I would say I cannot claim ownership on this or these trees. These trees own themselves. And it's an indigenous principle, not of ownership, but the fact that you cannot claim nature. And the first time I learned about it, I was excited. I'm quite a progressive lawyer, so when I hear something new, I'm like, oh, that's a nice idea. Nature and the rights of nature. And I studied it, and I was like, whoa, this is a, a good point. It's a good point. Why don't we put nature central in law? But what really, really touched me was for the first time, I heard a female Maori leader speak out. And she said, that there, that real estate, you can own real estate. But that land there, that is nature. You cannot own nature. That there is your mother. You cannot own your mother. And ever since I've been convicted, I don't know how to say it, but this has become part of my system as well. We cannot claim ownership of such beauty, of such big things. They're bigger than us. They make us whole. We're connected to it. And we should focus on this. We should focus on putting the rights of nature first. Well, then, Jan, is this a brand new idea? No, it's not. It's quite for our society. But it's in the Constitution of Ecuador. It's been there for 10 years and Bolivia. The rights of Mother Earth, or Pachamama, are codified in the Constitution there. There are beautiful examples of judges in India proclaiming the Gangi River and other rivers to be givers of life and therefore holders of life that need just the same protection and you, as human rights, and humans can stand up for it. In New Zealand, we have a river, a national park, and a mountain protected as a legal entity. And as this, this allows it to speak through in society. And a beautiful Supreme Court ruling in Colombia on the Amazon, the Amazon that is in, on fire continuously. The Supreme Court said the Amazon River system is of crucial value to life, to us, to all future life. And therefore, it's a holder, a subject of rights and a beneficiary of protection, conservation, and restoration. Okay, okay, nice, nice talks, 
equator countries, below the equator. How would that work in a Western society? Could that work in the Netherlands? Well, here we are in the Netherlands. We have some amazing nature in the Netherlands. The North Sea, the Veluwe, the Rhine River Delta system. Voted as most beautiful natural area in the Netherlands is the Wadden Sea. The Wadden Sea is a big tidal system. A tidal system that is connected to the Wadden Sea in Germany and Denmark. And as such, it's recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is so valuable, we have to protect it for future generations. We acknowledge this. The Wadden Sea is brilliant. It is full of life. Birds come and gather from the north and nourish themselves and fly through to the south. Underwater, life is beautiful and rich in diversity. And it's amazing as well. Every day, two times a day, you can stand on the coast and see the Wadden Islands in the distance and water will go down and suddenly land emerges. And you can see the land, it stretches all the way to the islands. You can even walk to most of the islands over the sand and then the water comes up again. And she does this twice a day. It's almost as if she breathes. It's almost as if we can see her heart beat. But this Wadensee area is under pressure. We recently had a disaster with an MSC cargo ship losing many containers. With toxic chemicals, plastics are still flushing on the beach. We have climate change as a major issue. The sea is warming up and the life in it cannot co-op co -op with it. It is eating away the island in a big and increasing rate. We think the soil cannot keep up with the sea level rise, so it will, it will end, it will go away. And at the same time, we are extracting gas from the area. We are extracting salt from the area, making the soil go down. So we have a UNESCO World Heritage Site that is not protected. And this was confirmed recently in a report. In a report that says the governance of the Wadden does not protect nature. And the new plans of our current government do not protect nature as such as well. It has many stakeholders, fishermen, ports, government, regional government, but they all have to think about nature. But nature as such is not represented. But there is a way to do this. We can use, and we have proposed a new way to put this into our Dutch legal system. In our system, we have legal personhood, legal entities. It was actually created, for instance, for a province or a city to buy things, but also for companies. So they can buy things, rent, lease, uh, employ people, fire people, pay taxes, avoid taxes. But this vehicle can also be used for nature. And we proposed, and we have already officially done this, and there's a publication in Water International on it, to create a new legal entity in the Netherlands, and we call it a nature ship, a natuurschap. It will have a unique statutory goal to protect the environment for present and future generations, and it will put nature at the table in Dutch society. So that, if you ask the question, who owns the Wadden Sea? The answer will be, the Wadden Sea owns itself. It is there, it is in our society. This is our Galileo moment in law. We put nature central, not people. We put that, what we are, nature, life, central in our laws. And we start from that. I'm very happy that you were able to be here today and share this Galileo moment in law with me. So if someone now asks you, who owns nature? You can say, nature owns itself. So, who owns nature? Nature owns itself. Who owns a mountain? A mountain owns itself. Okay, who owns a river? A river owns itself. And the last one, who owns the Wadden Sea? The Wadden Sea? Yes, the Wadden Sea owns itself. You were here in this Galileo moment in law. Nature central, people central, our future central in law. We see it, we feel it. 
Now we need to codify it and root this into our society. The time to talk is over. There is no time left. In any capacity that you have, as a lawyer, as a communication professional, use this. Stand up for Earth, because our planet asks us to act.